All right, let me talk to you just real quickly about player expectation. It's really coach expectation. Uh, I was telling, maybe I was telling Ken earlier, uh, you know, for four years, uh, my son just recently started playing one goal as of this year in the spring. And for four years, you know, I was harping on coaches like, look, you, you've got to understand that these are, these are kids, okay? And when you get out here, a lot of times we as parents, we understand that they may be four or five, six or seven for basketball, but somehow that doesn't translate when you get on the court with them. You know, and as coaches, we have a tendency to, to treat our child differently than we would treat maybe another player on the team. Or even as a parent, we have a tendency to treat and talk to our child in a way that we might not talk or treat their best friend, okay? In situations where I've addressed that in the past, well, it's my child, I know how they respond. Well, I understand that you're a child. I mean, I, I struggle with the same things too, but I want you to be very aware of what you say to your child, what expectations you place on your child, because I, for four years I was telling coaches, like, look, do not treat your child in any differently. Do not set expectations for your child that you wouldn't set for another child on the team. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter that, they, that they are your child, okay? You've got to realize they're young. They need to enjoy the game. They need to develop a love for the game and want to get out there and play and not feel like they're going to be rammed by their mom or dad or by somebody else. So when I'm saying that, you know, I, I came out this past spring for our first season of soccer, and uh, I was like, I'm doing the exact same thing that I told them for four years not to do. Like, I was all over my kid. I'm sitting him in timeout because he's not wanting to participate. You know, when, when I've got three other kids on the team who are acting just like him, and I'm not setting one of them out. And so literally, you know, I, was, I had a couple talks with my wife, and I was just like, I'm guilty of doing the very thing that I told them not to do. And so I was like, all right, I've got to change this at some point. So I, I muscled my way through the season as, as his coach. And, and then, of course, at the, end of the, at the end of the season, I had to really evaluate myself and say, okay, really, you know, if I'm, if I'm going to be up here in front of you guys, I've got to make sure that I'm setting forth that example as well. So now that we're in this season uh, with soccer, we went through a t-ball season as well. But it, it's, it's difficult. Because you want, you have expectations for your child to perform at a level because maybe you've seen them do certain things at home against you or against another kid that they, don't, that they play with all the time. So you know their ability. Like I know my son's ability to dribble the soccer ball when he's with me. I know how physical he gets, but when he gets out there, he just totally shuts down. And so that made me mad. It got me frustrated. And I was just like, I can't do that. Something, there's something that's different about him getting out here with other kids that's, that's really transformed his thinking and his mindset to the game. All that to say, set some very level-headed expectations. Don't expect a whole lot. You know, you want to maintain, maintain discipline on the court with your child and with other children. I'm okay with that. But remember that they're young. And, you know, what we do really shapes their mindset and their appreciation and love for the game. You want them to enjoy the game. You want them to be able to come back and play again. You don't want to have to force their hand or, or weasel them into another season. You know, if you play this, I'll buy you this. You know, obviously, the kid doesn't want to play. You know, you score two goals, we'll take you and get ice cream. Okay, I hear that all the time, every season. There's nothing wrong with motivation, but think about what you're doing. Does your child really want to play? You know, a lot of times, guaranteed, most of these kids are not going to sign themselves up. They're not going to do it. It has to be you doing this, okay? Set forth some good expectations. Move in a direction that's going to be a way that you can build them up, build your teammates up, set an example for their parents, and all of that. That's all I'm saying, okay? It's a struggle. It's tough, okay? So that's all. Okay. What to focus on? Focus on dribbling. These kids got to understand dribbling. Here's my thought on six- and seven-year-olds. Uh, if you don't... If you don't accomplish anything else, if, if, if you can teach these kids how to dribble with their right hand or their left hand with some level of competency without the ball being stolen, you've accomplished a great task in seven to eight weeks with these kids. I'm not saying settle for that, but I'm saying if you accomplish that, great. You ought to applaud yourself. You ought to be happy. You, you, you've made some ground on this. There are other things to cover as you do this. You definitely want to cover what traveling is, making sure that when they do pick the ball up, they're not happy feeding it. Peyton Manning all around, okay? Teach them what a pivot foot is and if they can use that 
pivot foot. We will be calling traveling like we did last year. We're a little bit more loose with the six and seven year olds. We'll allow a little bit of this back and forth, but when they start making a move out of a defensive position, away from the defender, we will call the travel at that point. We're not gonna allow these players to create an advantage for themselves from a violation. So we're gonna do what we can to, to teach that. Bear with the referees. A lot of these referees are intimidated. A lot of these referees are young, they're high schoolers. So it takes us, you'll see that there's even a progression with a lot of these referees. Referees are learning from week one. Many of these referees aren't gonna be able to be out there every week like the kids are gonna be out there every week. So their progression, uh, progression is going to be a, a little bit slower. So we'll do what we can to work with them and help them. We're going to ask for your help as coaches to help them. Don't talk down to them. Encourage them. Point things out to them if you see a violation. One of the biggest things that, that I've seen from, from me as a coach uh, with regard to basketball is I go up to my, my referees usually because I know that my players, some of my players have an aptitude to do certain things. Like I might have one player that really likes to travel or one player that really likes to hack or grab. And so I'll go up to them and say, look, here, I've got this player and this player. This is, if this happens, I want you to call them. What that does is that it encourages them to make that call. They're not intimidated by, hey, if I make that call, is this coach going to be upset with me? Is that a ticky-tacky kind of foul? What you're doing is you're giving them, you're giving them that, that ability to make that call with confidence. You're building them up because you're helping them understand that here's an, an area where these players are weak. That's just what I do. You don't have to adopt that, but if you can and help these help them, then do it. Okay. No lane violations in this age division. We don't have enough area to work with, so there's no three second, five second lane violations or anything of that sort. There's no over and back because the court is so small. If the ball is, if they lose possession, it bounces back across the half court tape, half court line. If they get possession and come back, we're not going to create a turnover as a result of that. Okay. Help them understand that. Here's the big one, defense. Teach your children how to play defense with their feet, not their hands, okay? It's a big one. A lot of kids at this age, I mean, even the older age divisions, a lot of kids, man, they wanna reach. They wanna slap at the ball, claw, do everything they can. Teach them a good defensive position, keeping their arms out, moving their feet. When the ball, when, when the offensive player picks the ball up, teach them not to slap at the ball, but just to create a defensive all they have to do is put their hand, hands up and go back and forth. A lot of times, just by doing that, they will create a steal from themselves because if they try to make a pass, they're going to block it or deflect the ball. Okay, That's what I would encourage you to work on with these, with these players. Those are some of the key ones. Hi, how are you? I'm good. Good. Okay, now that we've covered all that, you don't have any questions? Double dribble? Yeah, pretty prevalent. That's what my kid does all the time. So I'm wondering. We're going to have to call the obvious ones. Um, again, here, this is where it's hard with six to seven years. We could call everything, and you're going to be mad. We could not call it, and you're still going to be mad. Okay, so this is where the tough balance is for us. Um, double dribbles, the travels. Again, when, when the double dribbles, when every, anything, they create an advantage for themselves, they beat the defense as a result of that, we're going to have to call it. That's kind of how I've measured it. Um, if you disagree and you think we ought to call it, high and tight, then I'm okay with that too. I just want there to be consistency across the board. That's how we're going to teach our referees to call it. Did you have a question? Mm -hmm. okay. Stealing? Stealing? You can steal. You can steal. I, and I'm okay with them playing defense with their hands. I'm just telling them, teach them how to play with their feet more than their hands. Because I think I've coached twice, but the, two of the mis, biggest disheartening things for me is like, especially when you have a a six-year-old who's not coordinated, he's struggling to even dribble the ball, and every time he gets the ball, somebody reaches in and steals it because it's so easy because he just stands there and does this, and the kid never gets to shoot the ball. That, to me, that's just, it breaks my heart to see that, but we're, you, you allow that, right, people to just? I'm okay with either. If, you, if, if we can agree tonight that, hey, look, no steals in this division, just play, hard part is what, what's a steal, you know, at some point, you know, I mean, if, if, it, if a steal is created by them reaching in and slapping the ball, that's one thing, if a steal is created just by them playing good defense with their hands up, you know, at what point do we not call, that's where it really becomes difficult for us, either we call it, in my opinion, or we don't call it. Somebody have a question? No.